Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about the second derivative and what it tells us about the graph. The direction that a function curves is called concavity. Okay, so we have two types of concavity. We have concave up and concave down. So we say that if f prime, the first derivative is increasing, then f is concave up. Concave up looks kind of like a cup, like it could hold water. And if f prime is increasing, well, we know how to find out if something is increasing. We look for its derivative. So f prime's derivative would be f double prime to be greater than zero or positive. So another way of saying that if f prime is increasing is to say if the second derivative is positive, then the original function is concave up. The opposite of that, if f prime is decreasing, or using that same logic, if f double prime is less than zero or negative, then we can say f prime is concave down. Concave down kind of looks like a frown, so concave up looks like a cup, f double prime positive. Concave down looks like a frown, then f double prime is negative. Now if we have a change in our concavity, we call that point where the concavity switches from being concave down to concave up or up to concave down, we call that a point of inflection. So we can kind of see that here. Here this yellow portion of our graph on the left is concave down. We can see that it looks more like a frown. And then we have this point of change and then the pink part of our graph or the right hand side, we're concave up, we're bending upward. And that point where it changes is concavity. We can find those points of inflection by looking for critical points of the second derivative and looking at where we change concavity around those points. So let's put that together with a function. So for this function, we're gonna find all the intervals where the graph is concave up, all the intervals where the graph is concave down, and then we're gonna state all inflection points for the graph. All of that information is gonna come from the second derivative, so we're gonna start by calculating that. In order to get to the second derivative, I need to go through the first derivative, which for this function would be 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And then our second derivative will be the derivative of that, which will be 12x squared minus 24x. All right, so we wanna find critical points of that, which just like the first derivative, critical points come from where this is zero or where this is undefined. Because this is a polynomial, quadratic polynomial here, this will not be undefined. So we're gonna focus first just on where it is zero. So I can factor out a common factor of 12x. That leaves me with x minus two. So I have two critical points here and those are x equals zero and x equals two. Now, to figure out what the behavior of our derivative is, we're actually gonna do a very similar process to what we did to figure out where things were increasing and decreasing. We're gonna take our number line, we're gonna go ahead and pop our critical points on there, and then we're going to test values into, in this case, the second derivative, and see for each interval if that second derivative is positive or negative. So if I take a value less than zero, let's say perhaps negative two, then I'm looking at what's going on h prime or h double prime at negative two. That would be 12 times negative two times negative two minus two. Remember here, I'm not worried about the value, I'm really only worried about the sign. So 12 times negative two would be a negative number and negative two minus two would also be a negative number. So overall, that would be a positive quantity. So I'm gonna, just gonna put a plus sign there. I'm gonna do the same thing for these other two intervals. So testing one 
or any value between 0 and 2, that is 12 times 1 times 1 minus 2, or a positive quantity times a negative quantity, which is overall a negative quantity. And then finally, testing something larger than 2, whatever value you like, 12 times 4 times 4 minus 2. It's going to be a positive quantity times a positive quantity, which makes a positive overall. Okay, so this actually looks pretty similar to something we've seen before with the first derivative. Now we just need to read this and categorize it based on the fact that we're working with the second derivative. So we have concave up. I'm going to shorten concave to cc. So we know that we will be concave up on any intervals where our second derivative is positive. I see two of those. So I am concave up from negative infinity to zero and from two to infinity. And I'm going to be concave down, looks like a frown, anywhere that my second derivative is negative. So that happens here in the middle interval or from zero to two. Lastly, with this one, we want to look for any points of inflection. Remember that those are going to happen anytime our graph changes concavity. So I can see that around the critical point of zero, I change concavity from concave up to concave down. So zero is the location of a point of inflection. If I want the y value for that, just do zero to the fourth minus four times zero cubed or zero. And then my other critical point, I change from negative or concave down to concave up. So that is also a point of inflection. So for that one, two comma, if you want the y value for that, just replace that in two to the fourth minus four times two cubed would be negative 16. So the locations for our points of inflection will be zero, zero and two, negative 16. All right, guys, that does it for this video on second derivatives and graphs. To see one more example going through this, catch us in the next video.